Welcome, uh, and thanks for joining us at the Storage Craft session at today's Tech Field Day. This is our fourth uh, Tech Field Day presentation, and what we are going to talk about today is two products that we introduced on the 20th of August, and we are really excited about that. So let me start with a brief introduction of Storage Craft. For those of you who don't know the company, the company was founded in 2003 with the mission of delivering comprehensive data protection solutions for the SMB and the MSP market space. And over the years, they have established a pretty dominant space in this market. We have over 11,000 MSP partners and channel partners utilizing our technology pr to protect over a million plus servers worldwide. So historically, StorageCraft Data Protection Solution has been very good at protecting physical servers as well as VMs uh, that are really um, uh, performance intensive as well as require very high levels of SLA. So we had an agent-based protection mechanism. And uh, over the last many years, the company has grown, pre I mean, has grown pretty rapidly. Now in 2016, TA Associates invested about $187 million into the company and brought in a new management team with the intention of accelerating this growth and also revving up the innovation engine. So with this focus on uh, revving up the in innovation engine, the company actually acquired two other companies in 2016 and 2017. In 2016, they acquired a company called Gilware, uh, whose primary technology was file system based analytics. And in 2017, they acquired a company called Exablocks, which was more into scale out storage uh, that was targeted more towards the mid size enterprise companies. So, Exablocks at the time of acquisition had about 350 plus customers in the mid size enterprise segment. Uh, across a broad range of verticals, including education, healthcare, financial services, etc. So, as you can imagine, I mean, uh, so now if you look at it from the storage craft portfolio perspective, there is a lot of expertise in the SMB data protection space on the software side and also on the appliance side in the mid size enterprise segment with scale out storage. The scale out storage from Exablocks or what we used to call it call as one blocks at that time was based on a scale out object storage system with a distributed file system built on top. So what we have done at StorageCraft over the last 15 months since the acquisition of these two companies is actually integrating these technologies and that is where we are really excited uh, to talk to you about the new products that we announced on the 20th of August. So uh, last week we actually announced two products. The first one is what we are calling a Shadow Safe. Shadow Safe is the next generation data protection platform. Uh, it has, I mean, the, the, the key differentiators for Shadow Safe uh, versus the other products in the marketplace is that it's a SLA driven data protection and recovery mechanism. In fact, you will see this uh, in the demo from Junior in just a few minutes on how we can actually set up the backup policies and recovery in just a matter of, I mean, by just using one or two clicks in there. The other aspect of Shadow Safe is also that we have introduced agentless protection. So remember, I was talking about uh, storage crafts history or historically being pretty good at agent-based protection. Now with ShadowSafe, we also have agentless protection. So with this, customers can now leverage ShadowSafe in order to protect all of their servers and infrastructure within their uh, data center, be it uh, performance intensive VMs with an agent-based protection, physical servers, or the, the, the VMs that truly uh, are the middle of the road in terms of their performance and SLA requirements. So that's one product, and the other one is what we are calling as OneSafe, and this is where we have integrated the scale-out storage um, along with data protection and the disaster recovery services that StorageCraft has in order to create a 1U and a 2U appliance that can do primary and secondary storage inbuilt with data protection and integrated with uh, disaster recovery as a service. And this is something that we are targeting the mid-size enterprise segment with. Okay, so if you think about it, right, a typical mid-size enterprise segment, they are Stress, stressed for resources um, as well as for time. So in order to 
uh, manage their data and data protection, they typically have to decide, okay, what am I uh, putting together for physical, I mean, what am I using for primary storage, for secondary storage, for data protection, etc. With these appliances, they can just put in a single appliance that can serve out some of their primary workloads, uh, which could be unstructured data or um, mid-tier VMs, as well as a secondary store with data protection in there. Okay, so that's what that's the introduction I wanted to give uh, uh, on StorageCraft as well as the products that we are announcing today. Now let me just hand it over to Hugo who will go into the technical details and the more exciting uh, parts of the product. Thank you. Good morning everyone. Uh, Hugo Parra, I'm a Senior Director for Product Management here at StorageCraft and delighted to be a part of this event. I'd like to thank Stephen for inviting us and helping us uh, communicate this message to some of you. Sridhar talked a little bit about some of the reasons behind this innovation that StorageCraft is taking to market. And I always like to ask my audience about the products that, the problems that we are trying to solve and how it aligns with what they do. So if you don't mind just spending just 30 seconds looking at these problems, right, we have unpredictable and exponential data growth. And what I'd like to do is you, for you to think about two, if you were to select the two problems in here that you struggle with or that people that you talk to are constantly having initiatives around, what would they be? And I'm gonna ask you in just a minute, but rapid increase in the cost of downtime. Uh, are we becoming increasingly more dependable and more um, you know, just dominated by the fact that there's no room for downtime or, or, or data loss? Uh, the fact that having diverse solutions increases exponentially the management complexity of your systems, or that the fact that there's always seems to be a crunch for you know, for complete and, and there's all the resourcing that you would like to have in your environment, or simply that DR tends to take a backseat and many of the people's plans tend to be unproven. Right, kind of like we hope that it's going to work in a case of, of that uh, of an event of a disaster, and there's really no true reliance in what might happen. So let me ask by show of hands quickly: if you selected two of these that are primary to you, who would say unpredictable and exponential data growth is one of the things of concern, areas of concern? Okay, uh, rapid increase in cost and downtime. Okay, we got a we got a hand up. Uh, crushing management complexity. We got three hands up. Uh, limited financial and human IT resources. We got five hands up. And DR, uh, business continuity. <laughs> All the hands went up on that, right? This is, these are real problems. And, and when I ask this question, I do that often, I get a pretty uh, spread out response on this stuff. And everybody's at a little bit different stage, right? And so what StorageCraft is coming up with, with this one save and shadow save, is extremely unique. And if you look at any of these components, SLA-driven data protection, you might think of someone else who is doing that, some part of that, right? Primary storage for virtual servers. Again, you, you can think of several solutions that do that. Primary storage for unstructured data uh, also as well. But what is unique and what our customers are coming back to us, especially in the mid-market, is the fact that you're integrating all these solutions on a common converged scale-out storage platform is what's bringing some uniqueness to, to how we can solve problems that we are dealing with, okay? And so, again, this is one of those cases, and, I, and as I turn this over to Junior to see a demo, I think you're gonna see how those elements come together in a very unique way that we believe is gonna enable our customers, potential customers, to be able to solve things in ways that they haven't been able to do in the past, all right? So let me talk a little bit about some of the, what those things are. First of all, I talked, I, I briefly introduced data protection and Twitter earlier on said SLA-based uh, uh, data protection. And these are some of the things, just a couple highlights of what our customers can look forward as they look at our solutions. Number one, and again, Sridhar mentioned this before, we are combining our legendary agent-based protection based in industry, but, but we are now adding host-based protection with one single seamless experience for our customers. We're not talking about just one console. 
We're not talking about one process. We're talking about everything from beginning to end, being able to manage side by side. In fact, the, the customers don't even have to worry about how they're, what policies they're assigning to one or the other. It's a seamless experience. Physical and virtual system recovery, right? The simplest mechanism that you'll find. Question. There's a question. So now that you're doing host-based recovery, if, or I'm sorry, uh, data protection, if a customer uh, needs application consistency for a VM, are they going to then need to use agent-based instead for that particular VM, or do you have tools to uh, have application consistency within host-based? Great, great question. We have, to, we have a couple of approaches. Mm -hmm. One is through an agent, we have VSS support, and that gives us amazing application mm -hmm. consistency. In our host-based, we have the ability to have also the VMware tools mm -hmm. that help to provide some level of application consistency, and I think Junior can talk a little bit about that. Cool. We have some of the demo. So it, it, the, 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 the end result is that we give our customers more tools to, to address what they need to do, but it's all integrated into one experience. Thank you. All right, so great, great question. Um, we're gonna be, again, we're gonna show you this as part of our demo, but we have actually come out with technology that allows customers to recover, right, to recover servers onto a VM in 20 milliseconds. This is, this is something that is hard to believe, but we're going to show you some of that here in just a few minutes. Um, and again, this is a, a, a great uh, a feature of us. We can recover the similar hardware or virtual environments, and then um, because of our host base and because of what we've done in storage, our VMware integration has just gone, even we've taken that to another level. So let me, let me keep uh, moving uh, along here um, so that we can have enough uh, time for our demo. At the base of this solution, the one safe solution where hardware, uh, scale out hardware is, is a primary uh, 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 value of that, we have our object storage, right? And unlike uh, systems that are like, block based, we, we store all our data in, in objects. These objects can be decomposed, duplicated. Obviously, it provides all the efficiency of breaking things into an object. But many customers that choose to go the object route then have to wrestle with the problem of how do I make my applications to be enabled to use that storage? And what we've done, what StorageCraft has done, is we put a file system layer on top of that. So applications can benefit from all the, all the value of having an object-based distributed object base underneath it without having to change or reconfigure their applications to access the, that value through NFS, SMB, et cetera. Right? And that's, that's certainly a, a great value for that. And what this overall gives us is great scalability for all the storage needs for those, uh, for those applications and those uh, workloads. Right? So that's kind of the starting point for uh, what's underneath. Now, a couple of things that are important. I mentioned that we have scale-out storage. We have uh, primary um, uh, storage for uh, virtual environments. Right, And what you see in here is that because of the scalability of the storage, we really have no capacity restrictions for NFS data stores, right? And so if you have applications that are accessing their, and dumping their data in NFS, uh, it, you can start with a couple of nodes and you can just grow it up as you need it. And at no time you have to say, okay, this NFS is gonna be, uh, data store is gonna be restricted to this from the get-go, right? It just grows as you need to do and then uh, the way that we have implemented our, our, our scale-out capabilities, do it in a way that, does, that you don't have to reconfigure applications or your storage, right? No downtime. And again, you can just scale out as the needs and the use cases that you're using our, our technology uh, is, uh, is requiring. We are VMware ready, certified, right? And so all the benefits of being part of that program and the support that comes from uh, the VMware team apply to that, and it's just a great value to our customers. So VMware is the only hypervisor that you're planning to work with at this time? We have, um, we have support, as I get to the data protection piece, uh, we have uh, host-based protection of VMware environments in our very re first release. We're adding Hyper-V and others shortly after that, hopefully by the, before the end of this year. Okay. And then your primary target um, has to be on-premises, correct? You're not trying to do anything cloud-based at this time. Yeah, our, our initial focus right now, that's certainly what we are uh, targeting, right? And so we're going to be 
listening to the feedback from our field and then start keep moving in the direction that our customers want us to go. Yeah, okay, great you. question. And I think that kind of leads me to this next point. When it comes out down to unstructured data, right? Uh, there's all kinds of benefits that this object-based storage does for us, including the ability to do the duplication, right? Both variable or fixed length um, compression. It can be turned on or off, right? But we get great benefits from that as well as data lands on our, on our storage. Uh, continuous data protection, we're just basically continually taking snapshots, right? If you turn that on off the data, and then you can figure out, you can specify the retention period for that data. Now, the objects that get, that, that, that land, when objects are created, I didn't mention this earlier, they're uh, immutable, right? And so it gives protection for all kinds of security attacks. They, it's impossible for someone to go back and change objects that have been already created, right? And so you can always revert back to save data, data that was protected at the right time before, before things went wrong, and it's another value of what we're doing here. Remote, uh, uh, remote replication on and off from one cluster to another, you are able to do that. And again, a picture here of, you know, you can start with one particular uh, workload and, and, and you don't have to plan for, you know, 300 terabytes when you're starting with a, your first project. You're fine to start with a single node. In fact, you don't even have to have all the disks populated in there, right? And then as the ap application for that particular storage grows, then you can scale that out as you need to. So with this being object storage, what does your fault tolerance look like? Uh, maybe. Um, yeah, so there are different uh, fault domains. So when you create the cluster, you have the opportunity to choose between one drive failure protection or two drive failure protection. And so it'll look within drives within a node, and then as you scale out and add multiple nodes in the cluster, it'll automatically adjust where all the objects are distributed throughout that cluster to protect against the greatest possible failure. It's still erasure coding based, uh, like the original. It's, it's not erasure coding based, it's actually replica based. So for every object that is written, we create either two or three copies of that object based upon that protection level. And is it all flash? So there's, uh, it can be all flash, uh, or a node in a cluster can be hard drive based. So you can have 38 terabytes in a single one U, all flash, or you can have just over 200 terabytes in a two U. So with a 17 bay version. What protocols are you supporting for access? Uh, NFS and SMB. What version of NFS? Three. And this is where you can supply your own hard drives or you buy hard drives from storage crap out. Correct. You, customers can bring their own hard drives and so they're paying retail pricing for flash, right? So a 3.8 terabyte SSD from Intel is like sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars um, you guys know what prices are from other vendors, right, for that. And then 12 terabyte drives are about $450 today, and that's obviously coming down over time. We haven't seen the, the claim that you're making restoration in, like, milliseconds. Uh, drives don't have any impact on that? Or is it a completely diff different so way of doing it? So the, the, the recovery that Hugo was mentioning earlier, that's actually from a data protection. So if you're recovering a VM and you're going through the workflow from there, recovering from a drive failure is a different amount of time, right? That's not the 20 millisecond time, is, if that was your question. Yes, but, but what I meant is that if the storage appliance has slower drives, for example, how, and we are choosing the disks that go into it. So if we choose something that's slow. Yeah, so two parts that, yeah, so for the all flash, there are definitely different qualities of SSDs, and we do have a compatibility list for some Samsung and Intel, really mixed use case SSDs there. But on the hard drive side, we just recommend 7200 RPM drives. We don't recommend like the 54, 5900 RPM drives, because you're right, the performance will degrade, and the cluster will be slower if you don't, if you use subpar hard drives. Are you yeah. saying the hard drives, though, won't affect the recovery, or they will? Because the, the ten mil, back to the comment about the ten oh, second recovery that you have in the system, will that affect the recovery? Yeah, that's independent because that's going back to the primary storage for the virtual environment. And so, if the primary storage of virtual environment is you know an all flash, and you're backing up to a hard drive based cluster, you can still recover in that same amount of time. Okay. Because right? all, whoa, the, all whoa, the application whoa. I/O goes to the. Let us. Yeah, we, we, let, let us dive into that a yeah. little deeper. I think I see I see some yeah. questions popping up. Right. I think we're gonna let, let us get ahead of that. I have I do have a slide to illustrate that, and then and then we'll show you the demo of that. Okay, that's a very intriguing. So thank you, Sean, on that. Uh, these are the models that we are uh, uh, that we have uh, announced 
right? And we're going to be available here in a, in a few weeks. Uh, we have two models that are uh, hard drive, uh, uh, hard disk drive based, and then we have one model that is all flash. So you can see the 4,000, the 4,400 series versus the 5,400 series, right? The, the 4,400s are two, uh, two U's versus one U for the all flash. And then as, as, as you can see, you can come up, up to 12 drives for the 4412, 17 for the 4417, and then up to 12 terabytes um, a piece. So it will add up to raw storage of 144, 204, and then 38 terabytes of all flash for the, uh, for the 5410. All right, and come with 10 gigabyte uh, ethernet. And uh, yeah, and so the, the, again, it gives our customers a, a range of options. Um, as Sean was saying, the, both the capabilities and the pricing, right, for the, this product that we're uh, uh, launching is targeted at the mid-market. And this, I think this is some of the exciting capabilities, is the, the, the integration okay, that goes along with um, the pricing model for it. That we believe it's going to be disrupted. Uh, a couple things. So I'm going to just basically oh, uh, tease up a little bit on, on, the, uh, on the demo that Junior is going to do, but I do want to uh, mention this. So what... When you look at all those capabilities integrated into one solution, right, what is possible? What is possible with that? And this is, this is a typical implementation that we're targeting with one safe, right? Being able to have one system, right? Uh, and you're gonna see here the management console, which, which we call, uh, excuse me, one system. Uh, how about that? We call it one system, and it allows you to manage every aspect of this configuration, from how you set up your primary storage, your secondary storage, how you go about protecting virtual environments, physical servers, and then how do you go about uh, not only uh, maintaining and taking care of that data, but also how you go about replicating to off-site storage, whether it be another one safe conf uh, configuration, public cloud, or our uh, purpose-built cloud, the storage craft has for DRAS, right? And then how you go about failing over <coughs> in a DR scenario and how you go about failing back in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a recovery. Yes, in question. In the example there, you're showing like a 5410 on one side and 5410 on the other side. You're not required to have it be like for like hardware platforms on each side, is that correct? That's, that's correct. That's One correct. to confirm. That's correct. Okay, so here it is. Let me just uh, set up uh, the, the demo, and I have just five minutes to do this. Uh, it's hard to see in here, but hopefully in the demo you will see, but one of the aspects, one of the aspects of one safe is the UI for a mid market needed to be absolute streamlined. You know the typical the typical route that uh, companies that buy other technology is acquire, 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 put it together, and then kind of good luck kind of thing, right? And what Storagecraft decided to do was something very different. We acquired all these technologies that Sridhar was talking about, and then we took a step back, and then we said we talked to we have PM have talked to hundreds of customers and, and, and other partners and said, assuming that you didn't have to start with something that is already hardened, right, and you just add stuff to it, how would you like this experience to be? If you, if you, if you start with the point of, I want to have, remove my storage silos, primary, secondary storage, have data protection, and I want DRAS, my DRAS experience, all in one experience, what would that experience look like? And that was the driver of everything that we've done um, as part of our one system ex uh, management experience. And again, when you see this from, from, from uh, the demo that Junior will do, I think that will, that will come to life. But I wanted just to, to, to tease you for what to look for in, in, in the demo that he's gonna show. Another piece that, was, uh, that is critical to the OneSafe uh, experience is that we wanted to truly implement management that is set and forget. And you hear that term a lot. It usually means send, forget, and oh crap, right? Something didn't go the way I forgot, and then yeah, I, it, I, I really dislike set and forget. It, 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 and that's why forget. I, I, you're not Ronco. That's why <laughs> you never, you never <laughs> quite forget, right? And if you forget, you're gonna pay. And so what you will see in here is that th this SLA-oriented type of management that Sridhar talked very briefly about is the key to having this management not only scale but always be making sure that you're protected. And we complete that from the creation of SLAs to how those SLAs are assigned to how we do reporting on the compliance of those SLAs. So we complete the entire cycle all predicated on those policies. Again, we'll be, look, look for that piece in the demo that, that is coming up. 
And then this is one of the intriguing things that we talked about is how do we ensure that our customers in a disaster recovery situation can recover not only quickly, but simply, right? I've talked to a lot of people who say like, look, half of the problem is when I'm running around with my head cut off and there's five steps, I'm gonna miss one of them, right? In a crisis, I want it to be simple. And so we've done it, we've, we've, we've uh, organized this so that you can very quickly determine what recovery point you want. It doesn't matter where the recovery point is stored, whether it's on-prem, off-prem, on our cloud, is the exact same experience. You go select it, and then through our VIO filter, which is a patent, patented piece from StorageCraft, you're able to bring that data, uh, and just remember this picture as Junior is talking to you about what this, this magic filter does, because it allows you to route information both to the primary storage at the same time that it's feeding it to the VM, and that's what enables that VM to power on in milliseconds. Right? And then from that point on, we just read ahead. We're intelligent about what to read ahead so that we keep populating that primary storage. Again, Junior will go delve into that here in, in, in a minute. So does it, does it bring that VM up on that appliance just to get you recovered and then eventually storage vMotion back to primary storage? How does that function? We can do both, but in this particular case, you're coming back to your original okay. state. You are recovering back in this particular picture back to what you optimized to run that service in the fastest possible way, okay? And then another, the last thing to look at the demo that you're gonna see is that, um, notice that it's the same console, it's the same experience. We're bringing data protection and we're bringing the management of all the storage, the scale out storage, including the share creation, share management, and the cluster creation and management that are part and integrated into that seamless experience.